Here. Fiber. Here. Box. Here. Head. Here. Catcher. Catcher. Here. Goblin. Here. Clock. Here. Palmer. Here. Wrist filler. Here. Okay, looking for a motion to accept the minutes as listed below. That's it. Any comments? Roll call. Patrick? Yeah. <coughs> Byler? Yes. Rest Miller? Yes. Pat? Yes. Bats? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. That's also another option. You know, I mean, when I talked to him. Yeah, that's what I'm just thinking. Maybe a different option than the plaque. Do we do like a plaque and a dedication, like we're dedicating, you know, this field to two outstanding coaches? I mean, essentially, they're the fathers of soccer at Tobahawk and, you know, and getting the program started and the success of this today and building that. So, is there any other recognition of any other coaches that took any of the teams to states? There is not. Like Ed Friend, who took the track team to states in 1988. And there might be in the display cases. I don't know. There's nothing that happens anywhere. All right, moving on to items, report, action. This is Tom. 9.0.1, I approve the following job description as listed. <coughs> Any comments? Roll call. Chris Miller. Yes. Heck. Yes. Bats. Yes. Coffin. Yes. Clock. Yes. Palmer. Yes. Fox. Yes. Hendrick. Yes. Byler. Yes. Nine point zero point two. I make a motion to approve Dr. Dennis Quirk as the school safety and security coordinator per Act 55 requirement that a school administrator must be named in this, to this role. 
Excellent. Any comments? The only thing I'll mention is, Mike, the, the Act 55 requires that it actually be, Chris Kirshner does all the heavy lifting, if you will, uh, but the, uh, and that is his role. The state requires that a school administrator be officially named as the person in that role. Um, so Mike was the admin before named in that and filed with the state, and Dennis will be, will take that role. Any other comments? Roll call. Heck? Yes. Bats? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. Hetrick? Yes. Pfeiffer? Yes. Rissmiller? Yes. Moving on to 9.1 finance, Mr. Heck. 9.1.1. Approve the adoption to the final budget for the 2023-24 school year with projected expenditures of $40,221,713 and projected revenues of $40,221,713, including a real estate tax millage rate of 25.3. At 511 per capita tax of $5. School code section 679 per capita tax of $5. One half percent earned income tax and one half percent real estate transfer. Five second. Any comments? Roll call? Bats? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. Hedrick? Yes. Pfeiffer? Yes. Chris Miller? Yes. Hey. Yes. All right. 9.1.2. For the adoption of the 2023-24 Homestead and Farmstead Exclusion Resolution. Second. Any comments? Roll call. Coffin? Yes. Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Pfizer? Yes. Rissmiller? Yes. Heck? Yes. Bats? Yes. Mm -hmm. 9.1.3. Approve the tax resolution to levy taxes for the 23 24 school year. Clock second. Any comments? Roll call? Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. Hedrick? Yeah. Yes. Pfeiffer? Yes. Rissmiller? Yes. Heck? Yes. Bats? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. 9.1.4. Approve administration to make any necessary journal entries and budget transfers to the financial statements of the school district after June 30th, 2023. Bob second. Any comments? Roll call? Palmer. Yes. Fox. Yes. Hedrick. Yes. Pfeiffer. Yes. Chris Miller. Yes. Heck. Yes. Bats. Yes. Kaufman. Yes. Clock. Yes. Nine point one point five. Approve the commitment of funds for the following categories in accordance with GSSB fifty four and board policy six twenty. Special education program. Athletic facility improvements, curriculum, the specific amounts for each category will be determined at a later date following the 22-23 school financial report. Fox Any comments? Roll call? Fox. Yes. Hetrick. Yes. Feiler? Yes. Riz Miller? Yes. Heck? Yes. Bats? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. All right. 9.1.6. Approve UPMC Primary Care Fredericksburg to sign off on PCA services for access billing at $35 per IEP for the 23-24 school year. There is no rate increase from last year. Clock second. Any comments? Roll call.
Moving on to 9.2, Buildings and Grounds and Technology. Let's track. 9.2.1. Approve the purchase of Dell Latitude Series laptops from Dell Computer Incorporated at a cost of $31,452.18 in accordance with the District Technology Plan for staff. Second. Any comments? Roll call. Feitler. Yes. Chris Miller? Yes. <coughs> Peck? Yes. Betts? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. Clough? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. Hedrick? Yes. 9.2.2. Elementary playground and outdoor classroom proposal. Potential board authorization. So, well, that's just a, this is an informational thing for now. Um, about two months ago, three months ago, um, we talked about uh, some work at our building and grounds meetings, some work that has to happen at our playgrounds. The rubber padding on the playground at Bethel is deteriorating and it is separating so there's repair work that needs to be done to replace that is about 140,000 uh, right Matt about 140,000 to repair it was about $15,000 but that bought us maybe two years three years and we would be right back to where we are um, so we were looking at different options Penn Burnville they have mulch in theirs the drainage isn't adequate there we need to rip that all out put drainage um, it's a mud pit when it rains now, so that needs work done. So we started doing numbers. Matt at that point had presented that to go with rubber mulch is about uh, $36,000 per uh, playground. Um, and then we know that there's some drainage work that has to be done at PV. And so we were looking at other options that are available. In, our pers in looking at these <coughs> options, we ran across turf as one of those options. Um, and uh, so if you remember back, um, one of the things that we have allocated in our ESSER is outdoor spaces, um, both outdoor refreshing outdoor playgrounds as well as outdoor classrooms. Um, so we did reach out to two uh, firms on what turf within the playgrounds would cost. One firm was half a million dollars, just shy of, just a little bit less than half a million dollars. The other firm is, um, is the firm that Shaw who did our turf um, on the field and their product seems to be quality as it's outlived its life um, or estimated life on that turf field. Um, their quote or their rough estimate is a little over $200,000. Um, so initially in talking with um, Brian as to how we would proceed if we were interested in pursuing something like this. It would be fully um, ESSER funded, federal funding. The money has been allocated to those outdoor spaces in our application. It's been approved. Um, but in conversations with Brian, his viewpoint is that we should go out to bid on a project like this to get the best cost as opposed to pursuing co-stars. Um, in kind of looking at numbers as to where they would be, you know, we're if we put rubber mulch in, we dig it out, we do drainage, and a lot of that work is going to be done ourselves. We're pushing, you know, over the, the life of the turf, which is somewhere between 10 and 15 years, we're probably pushing, you know, over $100,000 anyway, sunk into those playgrounds to get the rubber mulch and get things to where it needs to be. Um, Maintenance-wise, it seems to make sense to pursue turf, especially with the uh, grant money that's out there, or the federal stimulus money that's out there. Um, but we wanted to bring it to the full board to have that discussion. Uh, we could get, based off of where we've asked different vendors, we'd be able to get this project completed prior to the start of the year or just into September, potentially, depending on how we would bid it, get quotes, or bid it and get that approved. Um, but it looks like when you're looking at 10 to 15 years longevity, the turf might actually be the more cost-effective way to go than constantly refreshing mulch, pulling it out, putting new mulch in, rubber mulch, uh, whichever way we go. But I'll open it up kind of some discussions. I don't know if, Matt, you 
wanted to talk anything about on the operations side. I have a couple of questions. Sure. What is the warranty on the turret? It is a 10 year warranty. Because obviously, playgrounds get used very hard. So it, it's guaranteed to be intact and look presentable for 10 years. Is that prorated or is that, hey, that spot needs to replace and it's nine years, 364 days, or replace it or is it a prorated call? I'm sure that what they would do is they would cut out suction. What they tell us when we met with them is the biggest area that they find on on um, turf on turf playgrounds is the swing set area. Mm -hmm. So their recommendation is that you would put pads under the swings um, to help you know alleviate that wear. And they would do that. Yeah. 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 And when's the expiration on the Esther funds? When does it have to be used by? That particular Esther is September 30th of this year. It has to be committed or spent. So because it's 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 a little bit it's a little thicker product, um, so they have to put a, a much so at Bethel um, they can reutilize that foam or that rubber surface. They have to repair sections of it where it's deteriorated and it's you know blood torn. Um, but there has to be a shock pad underneath that has to meet certain regulations that if they fall. So on Bethel's side we can we can do the shock. We can use that existing padding for a shock with some repair. PV, they would have to put a whole new shock at it. But the turf is, is not a field turf, it's a lawn turf that they utilize. So it's a little bit thicker. It's, it looks a little bit more like grass, if you will. Um, My last question, if we need to take this out to bid, what's the chances that their bid is higher than their price that they said they'd do it for now? So the commitment tonight, what we would ask is to allow us to develop and put it out the bid. Obviously, we'd have to come back to the board in July when we see what those numbers look like. Um, so at that point is where we would make, need to make that commitment. But, you know, the commitment tonight would be just to authorize us to go out to bid, to develop it, go out to bid, to be able to bring better numbers or hard numbers uh, to you. You can still opt to go with the Coast Guard. 
that is where, um, I don't know if you want to speak to that or. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so we've had some issues and I think some concerns with the co-stars process recently. Um, at another district, we had an issue where they were trying to purchase something for co-stars and we ended up reaching out to a co-star representative because we couldn't find a contract on co-stars. It had a co-stars number on the contract. We wanted to look into it because part of what we talked about was they wanted to supply what's called ancillary services as part of the contract. Typically, if you have too many services combined, co-stars is supposed to be sort of for one issue. And if you have a lot of different services, it's supposed to be bid out and not lumped into one. So we wanted to check the, the contract to see if the ancillary services that they wanted were included. And we couldn't find the contract on CoStar. So we reached out to a CoStar representative, and they said, OK, well, we'll look for it. A few days passed by, and they said they can't find it. Their own representative said, well, actually, we can't find the contract on CoStar. Um, so had they purchased it through that, that would probably be a big problem. Ultimately, they said, well, we found something that's essentially parallel to the contract in question. So essentially, it's been approved through GoStars. Um, even then, though, what we found is, is two things. One, they're still trying to tack on ancillary services that I think probably don't meet the definition of ancillary services, which could put us in trouble. And two, there's a really significant market. We found out that originally when the CoStar's price was given, it was a certain number, and then by the time we were done talking to the CoStar's representative, they jacked up the price 30%. And so our questions were, how, how could this possibly be? You said this was the CoStar's number, CoStar's is supposed to represent a fair bid that's already in the process. They said, well, you know, the market changes, and ultimately the CoStar's representative ended up saying they can, or kind of do, put their own prices on because the numbers, the, the prices themselves aren't bid. They get the items and the contracts approved through CoStars, but the prices apparently, uh, we were told, they can just be adjusted. So there was a 30% markup for no arguable reason. So combining some of the issues we've had, you know, some of the companies have tried to, I think, shoehorn these massive projects through CoStars by just finding a contract that's the one particular issue and saying, well, this is an ancillary service, and that is an ancillary service, and expanding into this huge contract that probably legally needs to be bid. Um, the other issue, I think, in anticipating are there any problems to, to look out for on the horizon, is understanding that because this is ESSER money, wanting to be a little bit careful about what we do and not making any mistakes and not violating any procurement code issues, um, because if it's government money and we don't want to come back and, and find out. Or, or be told that we've misused uh, the ESSER funds. So it's a combination of, of a couple different issues that's making us cautious about co-stars in general. Um, so I think the safest way to do it is probably just to put it out. Um, because of that experience, I think because of other experiences, I think it's probably unlikely that, that the co-stars price ends up being the lowest price, and that once it's bid out, it ends up being higher. Maybe that's the case, maybe not. Um, probably won't be the case. If it just bids, we know that we're in the clear. Um, so. I think that's where we're, we don't want to hit ourselves where we all of a sudden get an audit and they're saying, you have to pay that money back to the company. Because we initially, in reaching out to the companies, yeah, you know, we've done co-star projects, projects, and there is no clear guidance from the state as to whether co-stars fits, whether, so to be on the safe side, I think we kind of backtracked a little bit and want to do the, the bidding process if we're, if we're interested in pursuing this. Like the rubber, 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 r
two beds, so you can pick which one you want to go with. I mean, it doesn't hurt. We can always reject. So if you're okay with us pursuing that, uh, we would just need a motion to authorize us to go to develop the bids and then to place it out for bid. So we need a motion to amend the agenda to say that. I mean, the, the I think it's already a discussion item. If you want to add it, you could have a motion to amend the agenda to add the motion. So we Mr. Heck, just continue right on with 9.3 and 9.4. Okay. All right. 9.3 and 9.4. Approve the consent of the assignment of the contract for the uh, transportation of school pupils in the July 1st, 2022, between the Pocahontan Area School District and Brandywine Pocahontan LLC. <coughs> Transportation Bob second. Any comments? This is, this is the bus company yes. change. So there is Price is acquiring, Price is looking to acquire Brandywine Trans. Brandywine Topohocken. Um, our contract is with Brandywine, and within that contract it says that they cannot they cannot transfer the contract from Brandywine to Christ without our board authorizing that transfer. Is that consistent with what the other school districts are doing? Then the terms stay the same? Yes. They have to inherit the contract as it stands. And how does the little tech post work? We got a little map that we just going to add on to the contract. We just yeah, add that on the purple pool. We would have to do it with the price for what is easy. We would add that. We could in theory, we could just say, hey, you got two more bus runs or three more bus runs at whatever that contract right. specifies for this school year. The BCIE was also putting the other quotes for us as well. So. Any other comments? Roll call. Bats. Yes. Kaufman. Yes. Clock. Yes. Palmer. Yes. Fox. Yes. Patrick. Feinler? Yes. Riss Miller? Yes. Heck? Yes.
9.5.2, I make a motion to approve the agreement with Hamburg Area School District for students to attend Topogon Area School District Agricultural Program for the 2023-2024 school year as presented. Excellent. Any comments? Roll call. Palmer. Yes. Fox. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Spider. Yes. Chris Miller. Yes. Heck. Yes. Betts. Yes. Kaufman. Yes. Clock. Yes. 9.5.3, I make a motion to approve the ARP Esther's funding proposal for staff professional development connected with mental health as presented at the June 6, 2023 board meeting. Excellent. Any comments? Yes, that's something that can be reviewed really. It's just a one year. It's just so a one year thing yes. because of being paid by us. Okay, gotcha. Any other comments? Once and done. I mean, they're trained once they're trained. It's, so. Yeah. We'll follow up internally to keep it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Patient, but yes, the training is Anything else? Roll call. Fox? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Feiler? Yes. Chris Miller? Yes. Heck? Yes. Betts? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Moving on to personnel, 9.8, Mr. Palmer. 9.8.1, I move that we approve the change in employment status for the following staff starting with the 23-24 school year as listed in the agenda. Bob second. Any comments? Roll call. Hedrick. Yes. Feitner? Yes. Chris Miller? Yes. Heck? Epstein. Bass? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. 9.8.2, I move that we approve the support staff compensation plan as presented to the board with new minimum starting rates. The following rates below. The plan also calls for rate adjustments for existing staff members to compensate for new starting rates as listed below. Top second. Any comments? Roll call. Feitler? Yes. Chris Miller? Yes. Heck? Epstein. Bats? Yes. Coffin? Yes. Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. Hedrick? 9.8.3, I move that we approve the request to terminate the sabbatical leave from Melinda Davis, effective 8 1 2023. Thanks, Any comments? Roll call? Chris Miller? Yes. Heck? Yes. Bats? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. Hedrick? Yes. Tyler? Yes. 9.8.4, I move that we approve the administrative salaries for 23-24 school year based on the Act 93 agreement and written contracts as presented to the board. Thanks, second. Any comments? Roll call? Heck? Yes. Bats? Yes. Kaufman? No. Clock? No. Palmer? Yes, with our expectation. Fox? Yes. Hedrick? Yes. Feitler? Yes. Chris Miller? Yes. 9.8.5, I move that we authorize Dr. Nestic to make employment offers offers necessary to fill all vacancies pending consultation with the personnel committee and board president to ensure positions are filled in a timely manner. All employment offers will be ratified at the appropriate board session. Thanks, second. Any comments? Roll call. Bats? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. <coughs> Fox? Yes. Hedrick? Yes. Feinler? Yes. Chris Miller? Yes. Heck? Yes. 9.8.6, I move 
that we approve to rescind the approval of Anthony Kreiser as a district custodian. Excellent. Any comments? Roll call. Coffin? Yes. Clough? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Byker? Yes. Bruce Miller? <coughs> yes. Heck? Yes. Bats? Yes. 9.8.7, I move that we approve a child bearing, child rearing leave absence for Ashley Moyer, grade 6, at Burnville Elementary from approximately 8.23 through 11.28.23. Any comments? Roll call? Clock? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Fox? Yes. Hedrick? Feiler? Yes. Chris Miller? Yes. Heck? Yes. Bats? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. 9.8.8, I move that we accept the resignation of Allison Balmer, uh, junior, senior high school, I teacher, effective 6 19 2023. Heck, sir. Any comments? I'll just say this is disappointing. All those in favor, give the consent to say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Aye. I'd just like to thank Allison for what she's done to bring our ag department uh, full circle and um, that we've greatly increased participation in the ag program through Allison's leadership and um, she's going back to our home district, that's why we're losing her, so it's not, she, it was a really tough decision for her, but um, we do really appreciate what she's brought to Tulpe and what she's done for the ag program and um, I would like to thank her for I would echo what Bill said. Allison has done a tremendous job. You know, we went from a dying program where we went from two teachers to one teacher, back to Allison as being one teacher and driving it back up. And certainly, to make it successful, one person couldn't do it. And um, we were able, fortunate, to get Amy Garber as well. And Amy does a phenomenal job right along. So, you know, where we're missing one, we still have a phenomenal teacher in Amy. And, um, you know, we'll find somebody to replace Allison and keep our program going, but it is a very healthy, strong program, and Allison is a big part of that. And so we'll congratulate her, and I know she's going home. It's a homecoming. It's the district she lives in, so it, it will be a head our district. They took two, two bus, or two band loads of kids to the National Convention this past year, and I can't remember the last time we've had that many kids go to the National Convention, because there's that much interest. So we just uh, were at the state convention uh, last week, and our, we had the number one placing turf um, student, Mason Lesnar, and as a team, the turf team took first as well. Uh, first in the state for turf management. So exceptional group of uh, science, uh, agricultural students. Great. Anybody that has any new business, any old business, are we looking at fuel oil pricing or pricing yet? I don't want to get out there. I could put it out there. Or can we do the pricing like we did this past time? Well, yeah, I guess we could. Just check into where yeah. we're at. Is listed there uh, briefly. <laughs> Are there any citizens who wish to address the board this evening? No, me? Oh, me? Yeah. Oh. So, <coughs> you don't want them to put your hand up. <laughs> I don't know. It did look like you were pointing to me. Okay. <clears throat> so, the um, just wrote down a few questions that I have, um, obviously, regarding reading. Um, so Act 45 was approved for the 21-22 school year to provide a roadmap to help students post-COVID. Um, so with Act 45, they offer 30 and 60 hour course options. Uh, so I was curious how our teachers um, are getting the training for this.
I think it's required based on the act that I read. Dr. Matlock, do you know? Sure. Okay, so Act 45 requires that uh, we offer, well, that any participating district offers professional development or goes through SAS for teachers K through three, teacher early literacy. So there are SAS courses already built, um, and that is a requirement that the next time we go through comprehensive planning, that needs to be built into the professional development portion of the comprehensive plan. So how, how is it determined what the teachers are taking, the 30 or the 60? It looks like it's an option based on the way that the act reads. Give me one second to pull it back up. Do you have another question? Sure, sure. Okay. I do. I'll go on. Okay. <clears throat> Um, well, <laughs> uh, so again, it's based on the Act 45. Um, so upon completion, it says that they'll be provided with a certificate, and I was wondering if they're to provide that to the district. It looks like it's done through the state, and I guess, so when they're finished, they'll receive a certificate. Is it a pass-fail, or is it just that they do it, that there's no, do they have to do well? And are you requiring them as a board to provide you with the certificate to show that they've actually completed the task? <clears throat> and who determines the 30 or the 60? The teacher? It's continuing that in case the board doesn't. Some of that is determined by the PD, the district. As far as I know, the district is not responsible for providing any kind of like certificate of completion or anything like that to candidates. Um, well, no. It shows that upon completion, that the the teacher would hit a button and they would be given a certificate. But my question is. Do they have to provide that to the district, and does the district require them to show that they've actually done what the law requires? <clears throat> I know for my continuing ed, I have to prove it. I was just curious if it needed to be proved here, and if they know about it, and if they're requiring it. I mean, anything that's a state mandate has to be tracked and we collect the certification. That's what I was wondering, so if you guys collect it. 100% we do. I mean, okay. whether it's proctoring assessments or Act 71 with suicide awareness, all of that stuff we have to do. You guys collect that, okay. Um, <clears throat> did you, I, so what I was, one of the questions that I had asked is the 30 or the 60, what determines that? Do you know? Well, a lot of it is that we are in year one of the current comp plan. So we've still got two years in our comp plan, so we start looking at the next one. That's when we have to incorporate that. That's when you it. incorporate this so, in. Okay. I mean, to be honest, in August, as with 155 in the school safety, right. like a mandated school safety training that mm -hmm. had to be done this year, right. the state still hasn't developed that, and that was supposed to be done by now. So okay. there's a lot of requirements that are out there without the actual measuring stick. Okay. So 100% that'll be built in. That's going to correlate real nicely with the literacy plan that Dr. Matlack presented last time anyway. So as we start looking at some of the, the language and verbiage, especially with science of reading in those pieces, mm -hmm. how we're bringing professional development that's meaningful, actually talking about what is best for our, our early readers and our developing readers. And then that'll get filtered into the next phase of comp Okay. So I do have some other questions. Um, I also wanted to know what direction ELA instruction is going. So I'm glad that you're here tonight. So it kind of, well, probably. So now I've got my document. Um, can you give me more to go? Like, what are you, what are you looking for specifically for ELA? Um, okay. So are we going to have structured literacy framework? Yes. Okay. Um, and if we're going to be doing that, what are the resources that we'll be using to implement that framework? 
So we are trying to make sure that we're striking a balance between uh, buying resources, but also having teachers who are as Act 55 or Act 45 is trying to get to the point of having teachers who are experts in Brown literacy that are able to move forward with providing intervention, providing help without necessarily having to rely on a single program that they're going to. So right now, we already have the Apple's, Apple Connection Group pieces that many teachers have gone through the training for. So we have that physical resource there to fall back on. Our focus is providing that professional learning so that that uh, Apple Connections is a tool, but it isn't a always necessarily your Bible that you have this and only this to go by. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. So, but is that the only resource or what other resources? Because are, if you're saying that this isn't the only thing that they can use, what are those other so things? So, as the tier one level right now, like we have our CKLA for K to five that we have. As but CKLA doesn't meet structured literacy. So, what are you the state be? is responsible for determining what programs. That's part of the next round of legislation. The state will take the responsibility of determining these are existing programs or existing curricula that meet the their definition of structured literacy and districts have the opportunity to be able to say we're going to do one of these or here's what we're proposing to do and have PDE approve that. But if we're using CKLA and I believe we're using that K-3-5 that doesn't meet that standard which, what standard are you referring to? Uh, explicit, systematic, sequential, and multisensory. It's designed, so, tier one instruction for uh, literacy in terms of the multisensory piece. The uh, CKLA, as it's designed, does not present as multisensory, but multisensory as a requirement isn't a tier one, everybody needs to get that. But if you're having a structured literacy program, none of those components can be missing, which means multi-sensory needs to be there. So, do you want I'm kind of going to stop here and just yeah. kind of interject. Yeah. If, if, I'm going to encourage, can, you, I'm gonna encourage you, Lisa, to have like kind of like a sidebar yeah. with him to pick his brain on some of that. I don't feel like this is kind of something. I can wait. I, I wouldn't public to comment. Stick around. If that's okay, yeah. um, if you have something else, I'll let you go ahead with anything else you want to address the board. Um, well, it's all else? about reading, and I think that the board should be interested in what's going on in our reading programs, as well as parents that are here or grandparents that are here should be interested in what's going on with that. Because how are you supposed to hold them accountable if you haven't got a clue? I can continue. The only thing I would say is. From our perspective, we're just getting questions thrown at us, and why does this not mean, and what does this mean? And there's no, you know, we're being asked to answer these questions on the fly. I mean, my understanding of Act 45 is it is not required by the state, but you're citing that it is required. So that's where we need to, you know, if you want to give us the questions, we'll gladly, at the next board meeting, answer all those questions yep. publicly. Yep. Um, but if you can kind of give us that opportunity so that we're not giving answers on the fly, and it would be appreciated. I, mean. I would have thought that it would be something that you would know since you're supposed to be the expert. So I will write them down and you can have them ready for me at the next meeting. You, you have to understand, at any point anybody can stand up here and just throw out a line and then we instantly have to be able to respond and, to that. And if you don't have it, you know, I appreciate you saying, you know what? Let us think about this. We'll get back to you and we'll answer it at the next meeting. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I woke up in a panic this morning thinking about the reading programs and these were the things that were kind of going through my brain, so I thought I would ask sure, them. Sure, we'll, more than well. Like, if you can get us those, we'll Just so we, we hear, me personally, this, we have a three year plan now. Right. And this has nothing to do with the remainder of that plan. This has to go into the next plan. Correct. So essentially, we have two years to learn this and get good at this new mandate, guideline, outlook, whatever you want to call it. But isn't that two years lost as well? You know, by 
I've never been a fan of CKLA, to be honest with you, since it's been implemented here. Um, but I just feel that that's two years of learning. So if you've got, say, a first grader, she's going to be, you know, in third grade before something new comes around or how it should be. You know, the learning so. to read isn't a new thing. Right. Let me just Science say is there. That we're not waiting the two years. That That's what I want to know. The professional learning, right. the focus of the comprehensive literacy plan that was presented last time. The main takeaway there is professional learning. And that was a self identified need. So that's where we're putting our eggs. Um, Dr. Perkis said this a number of times, it's, it's about people and not programs. So we want to make the investment in the as much professional learning as we can right. for staff, especially at that K-3 level and right. the early literacy, so that they're as robust as they can possibly be in terms of what they need to be for professional learning with that early literacy piece. So that as we have programs and as we have other you know, physical things to be using, they're able to make the determination of what works best in the moment with each student. Right, and, and I totally agree, having the teachers trained appropriately, which is why I brought in the Act 45, wanting to know that they're, <coughs> and how they're being trained. The, the linchpin of your question is why I was looking for the In sidebar order to deliver leader. what our children need. Right. In so order can to you get us your questions, and honestly for administration, can you get something together for us on sure. this Act 45, yes. so we can all learn together yes. for next time, if that's fair. Yeah, so, so, the other question I have too, I have two more questions. Um, Jeez, I think you're really exhausted. Okay, that, that we're time, done. Time, time period tonight. Um, are they pertaining to the same thing or are they something completely different? Nope, same thing. Okay. <laughs> Let it go. Let's, yeah, yeah, email it and we'll, we'll have open dialect next time on the Act 45. Is there anyone else that has anything else to, to add to this evening? Mr. Savison, your hand went up. I thought you were going to talk to us tonight. He can't hear you. Who was it? Mrs. Iger. Oh, hello. I just wanted to um, piggyback what Mr. Palmer said about Mrs. Um, Palmer leaving, or Palmer leaving. Um, my Nick was one of them that was in the turf grass team that won. And this is like totally outside of his realm. And actually, Mrs. Palmer was able to, like, along with um, Mrs. Barrett, his special ed teacher, kind of got him going into like a program that he'll be able to further and is looking for now to go into school for. So I just wanted to say thank you for allowing the kids to go and for supporting the program because it's it's really neat seeing everybody. Come. Uh, that's what we like to hear because a lot of kids that get there's so many different fields out there that you get exposed to it and you can see a career that they might not even thought about three years ago. And I got to see. Uh, I had to pick my son up early from the conference because he already had a trip planned, and I got to see all the kids up there, and like, you know, it was so neat talking to them and hearing about all the exciting things that they were doing. And my husband went to Penn State, but we also got to go and see all the turf fields and just hearing the excitement in the four boys' um, voices and just the two days that they were got there and got to go to the. They met with the head grounds crew keeper at Nittany Stadium, and they were just. Excited, so I just wanted to thank the board for letting them go and just personally say it changed life. So, uh, thank there's you. a lot of excellent opportunities for that program. Thank you.